Hey, hey, hey. Time for another Out of This World story from our space. I think if you aren't on the same page, you should just leave. And if you have reservations, should open your trap and talk to your partner. Today on our space, we learn that sometimes all it takes is a little check-in. Up first, fear is the mind killer. I found divorce papers in my air vent. Throw away due to privacy reasons. I, 29 female, and my husband, 30 male. I've been married for four years now, together for seven, and it's going fantastically well. He's handsome, cute, kind, loving, and makes me feel safe and wanted and loved and protected. He takes me on dates, shows physical affection wherever he can, and also just makes me feel happy. We have no kids, but we are trying for it. So the other day I was cleaning the house, I'm a housewife, and I was cleaning the air vent at the top of the staircase aisle, because we had never cleaned it ever since we bought the house. And when I opened it, there was a box, an unmarked box. I took it out and then opened it. And then there was a note for about it somewhere down below and divorce papers all ready with their names on it. The only thing that wasn't filled in was the signatures of us. I was crushed. He had just gone to work after kissing me for seven or eight minutes and hucking me and everything has been going great. So why this? I opened the note and it reads as follows. It is with immense regret and sadness that your love between you and my name has ran its course. I'm sorry, his name. You didn't deserve this. Or you did. I don't know. Maybe she cheated. Maybe you did. Maybe the love didn't last for you. All those times, all those moments of being with her are of no use now. In the end, she did go away. Or you rather made her leave. She's gone. Never coming back. It's okay, you freaking R-word POS. You didn't deserve her in the first place. Dumb and stupid and delusional is what you are since you didn't push her away in the first place. You don't deserve love. You deserve to be shot. Or, she cheated on you. I'm sorry for that. She let another man's dick inside of her, and she didn't back off. She had an affair, physical or emotional, and she didn't choose you. Forget her. Forgive her. Because to be amity is to be forgiving. And you deserve the peace, my friend. You did everything that you could. But she wanted more. Listen to We Don't Understand Each Other from ST3 and go to sleep. Hit the gym tomorrow. I'm here for you. Take care, mate. Yours. His name. His note was from himself, by himself, for himself. I'm crying right now. I've never cheated on him and never even had the thought of cheating on him. All I want is him to be with me. What should I do? It breaks me to see how he thinks like this. Let's see how the community reacts. First up, Slowbone says, OP, I hope you read this. When my mental health paranoid delusion was at its worst, my intrusive thoughts were always telling me I should be meticulously preparing for my strong, healthy, long-term relationship to fall apart. And I would do crap like this. I wrote myself notes to cheer myself up after imaginary scenarios like this. You pushed them away. They cheated and you wanted to die. You've fallen out of love. So your mental illness was too much and he left you. I even got myself on several apartment wait lists and worked on my credit score, just in case, because I was so paranoid I'd lose what I loved the most that I became obsessed with preparing as it was inevitable. Again, our relationship was pretty solid, loving, supportive. I don't think my partner ever knew the extent to which my intrusive thoughts and paranoia made me prepare for totally imagined potential heartbreak. I've never told him. We're stronger than ever, and I'm on meds and we have a great therapist, but OP. This is what your husband's weird note feels like to me. There's some deep-rooted insecurity and paranoia that he needs to address. And as unfun as the next steps that come might be, it is very hard to hear from a loved one that you're having paranoid delusions that affect others. You need to bring this up with him ASAP. Self-sabotage like this is self-fulfilling prophecy when unaddressed. Next thought from Apocalypse Cho. It almost sounds as if he wrote himself a pep talk in case your marriage goes to crap. You know what they say. Hope for the best, prepare for the worst. I'll be at this is to the nth degree. I don't know that I'd be able to not say something to him. This is definitely something that warrants a conversation. Yeah, this is bizarre. It sounds like something he's made up in his head. Maybe like personality disorder? Maybe he's super paranoid about something. Either way, if this is how he's feeling, or if he had any doubts at all about the sanctity of your marriage, he should have these discussions with you. Open communication is key. We can't be afraid to talk openly with our partners. I would bring it up with him, and just say that you found this, and see what he says. Update. Hello everyone, 
Thank you all for the support and the reception to this post. A lot has happened in the last seven hours, so here's my final update. It's just a few things I think you should know. He is depressed but has gotten considerably better due to medical means and therapy. He was diagnosed with OCD and depression, moderate. He also has been portraying signs of imposter syndrome ever since we started dating, but not to the extent that it could be considered seriously. He is quite smart, as he has been to an Ivy League school and is now currently working as a head of department of R&D and a well-paying job. But he doesn't openly express emotions, struggles with affection display. He does portray how much he loves me and makes me feel wanted, but he's still afraid of opening up. Him and I love each other to the extent that it cannot be described, and I definitely don't want to lose him. The mere thought of cheating disgusts me. How can I throw myself at someone who I don't even know and freaking care about? So he came home. I was sitting on the couch with the box on the coffee table. He tried to kiss me, but froze the moment he saw the box. I broke down at that point because the thought of him not coming home to me every day broke me. He came to comfort me, but I pushed him away. I'm just crying and saying, why? Why would you do this? You think you don't deserve me? Or you thought I effing cheated on you? He said nothing. After I calmed down, he said that he had made the arrangements for this, a contingency plan, three to four months ago, when an office worker of his got cheated on, and another office worker's marriage failed, as the wife didn't find the husband attractive or interesting anymore, and also, that was coincidentally, the time he became a Reddit user, and he started to get frightened about the issue, as he read many posts on r slash surviving infidelity, and also open marriages and relationships. He didn't tell me that he'd been using Reddit for the last two couple of months. He really tried to hold it in, but failed and went to a lawyer and got the papers done just in case. He said that he loves me to death and still finds me insanely attracted to the extent he doesn't want to leave me for one microsecond, and that if I were comfortable, he wants to spend the entire life of his with me. But he just couldn't handle the thought of another man even touching me, and he said that he just can't, even for his life, share me with anyone, and that I'm his and he's mine, mine and mine alone, and I'm his and all he is. He said he isn't trying to justify what he had done, and what he had done was wrong and unforgivable. But he said that he hopes I can understand the circumstances that made him do this, and that how much he doesn't want to lose me and can never even share me with anyone, and that he loves me the most and that he'd do anything for me and beg me to be transparent when I'm bored in the marriage so we could talk it out and work through it and pull through like always and for any reason that I feel upset or have a problem with. At this point, we both were breaking down. He tried to come closer to touch and comfort me and I let him. I wrapped my arms around him and didn't let go. We hugged forever and cried our hearts out. When he finally pulled back and he kissed me for God knows how long, I don't want to lose him. I love this man and I want to be around him forever and ever. We fall asleep on the couch with me on top of him. When we woke up and had breakfast, we burned the divorce papers and the note in our backyard and used the remnants of the combustion as manure for our plantations. After that, we took a bath and we just snuggled. I never let go, and so did he. We held each other for hours until we were okay-ish. We got up, and he made lunch while I hugged him from behind, and then we ate and snuggled. He fell asleep and I'm typing this while watching him sleep. He's still reaching out for me and his hand is on my thigh. We discussed and will consult the therapist for the both of us to counter the things he has in his mind. The more I look at him, the more I smile because I know I found the one for me. Reactions from the community start off with one from K8 Hoxie. I'm so glad that you were able to work together through this. This sounds like a best case scenario outcome. I'm glad you burned the papers. I bet that was really cathartic for both of you. Here's to some good therapy that strengthens your bond even more. Idyllic Truth chimes in. What he did so makes me feel disturbed. But maybe that's because I'm also insecure and wouldn't do it. But would definitely think of doing what he did. I'm glad I saw this update basically immediately after your other post. And that it was what it was. I'm glad you were able to talk it out and find some solace. Especially with him. Therapy would be good for you for sure. Hopefully, you can learn to open up to you, so incidents akin to this don't repeat themselves. Made me smile to read how in love with each other you both are. Super sweet. Wow, OP. What a roundabout way to really know that you both are on the same page. Fear and anxiety can be killers when they don't need to be. Fear can eat us up inside and make us create fake scenarios that just totally break us. It's important to live in the present and not let worry take over. Rather than jumping the gun and having those papers, he should have sat down with you, OP, and talked about how he was feeling. All of this could have been avoided. But I'm glad to hear that you are both on the same page. I think going to therapy is a brilliant idea and a great way for you and your husband to get even closer. What do you make of this? What would you have done if you found divorce papers? 
Would you have done the same thing if you were OP's husband? Up next, what's so hard about leaving before you cheat? I think my 28 husband, 29, cheated on New Year's Eve while I had the flu. We have two kids. Over the past week, each of our kids were sick and since I spend the most time with them, I caught it. They were over it by the time I got symptoms. It so happened I got the flu starting Friday night, so my weekend plans were halted. I wasn't going out anyway, but still. My two-year-old tested positive for the flu Friday and I started showing signs the same day. He's literally never here already, but also couldn't not go into work and I was supposed to accompany him. Anyway, I'm sick at home with two sick kids. All of us have fevers and he goes out. Yes, it's his job, but still. 10 o'clock, I sent a text saying I would be asleep by 12, so Happy New Year. I got a reply. Someone called me and woke me up at almost 1. I texted him to make sure he was okay, then dozed off. Ended up calling him around 3 a.m. to check on him, and he claimed he was following my sister-in-law home. 5 comes Rod. I ask if he's okay. He claims irritation. At 6.30, I text a bunch of question marks because he hasn't answered my last message. He said he was too drunk and had to chill for a bit before driving. When he strolls in at 7.30, he heads straight to the bathroom and washes his face. He said some people spilled liquor all over his new sweater and shoes, and he was super mad about it. Told me how he stopped at the only open place to get some ice, to sober up. Okay. When he went to sleep, I smelled his shirt. It was dry, and it didn't smell anything like alcohol. In fact, the bottom smelled like vagina shrugs, and his shoes were squeaky clean. So I woke him up. Like you left me homesick with the flu, with sick kids to lay up with a woman? He acted like I was tripping, or making it up. Who said that? I said that. We haven't spoken since. Just small words here and there. We just got into a really petty argument because I said everyone was getting on my nerves because while I'm sick as a dog, that kids are better and bothering me and he's no help at all. I can't even recover properly because I can't rest. He said the feeling was mutual and I told him he was welcome to leave. So he did. Which is fine by me honestly because I'm no dummy. But he was supposed to cut our son's hair and also I'm still really sick. I don't want to be dealing with this right now at all. My feelings aren't hurt at the thought of them cheating either. I actually don't care about that part. I guess he saw me being sick as a perfect opportunity. I'm just extra annoyed, but he's trying to spend this like I'm upset about not being able to go out for the new year, which couldn't be further from the truth. I had no intention of going out anyway. Edit. I want reread our messages, and I have the times wrong. I sent out the first message at 10.13 that I wished him Happy New Year and let him know I'd be asleep before 12 and told him to be careful. At 1.20... I sent out a message telling him I had a fever and that my sister was looking for him. That's who woke me up, he responded. At 4 a.m., I sent a, you good? No response. Note, we live in a smallish city. Everything shuts down at 2, and the after hours close at 3.30. At 6.16, I sent the question marks. He responded and said he was about to be on his way, and he came in at 7.30ish. Also, I didn't mention that his sweater also smelled like perfume because he was out, but I'm a bartender. If I spill liquor on my clothes, my clothes smell like liquor and whatever smell good I had on the next day, and especially in the next few hours. I don't think I'm controlling or trying to make sure he didn't get into the drunk car or accident arrested her heart. The community responds with some thoughts. Don't 139 says, Yeah, something's fishy here, and I'm not talking about the vagina stink. Who the F takes five hours to fetch ice? Well, since ice, ice doesn't help crap to silver up, no wonder it took him so long. Who the F tells a bartender that ice helps silvering up? Sure, buddy. If that works, try selling that crap because you're gonna get effing rich. The fact that you told him he spent the night with a woman and he just said, Who said that? Didn't deny nothing. Very fishy. But the worst is that he's no father to his kids. He never takes care of them. He do all the parenting and instead of going out, getting home by 3 a.m. so he still had fun, but can be present the next day, he comes home hammered at 7.30. And again, you are the one expected to take care of the kids. Even when you're sick. Basically, you get no sick day, no help from your husband. No respect either. That man is trash. I feel like he's been cheating on you way longer than this. Why now? Why when you're sick? I feel like if you're constantly with your kids and he's no help at all, he's been off screwing around on you for some time. I'm sorry your relationship has gotten this far that you don't care that he has cheated on you. Why have you stayed? This sounds like it's been broken for some time. Update. I don't know how to link my last post, but it's on my page, and it was deleted from this sub I was on. I'm not going to lie, some of these comments are, phew, Jesus Christ. Some questions. Yes, you can get tested for the flu. You're controlling. I mean, okay, let's go with that. 
He works in the music industry, so it's not uncommon for him to be away from home. It's not strange to me that he goes out without me because it's part of his job. We actually almost never go out together, but we usually bring in New Year's Eve together. I didn't care about him working because it was supposed to be work. But again, things shut down here pretty early. He's never come home in later than four, and that's not often at all. There was someone who said his clothes wouldn't smell like liquor. Let's go with that. Why would his clothes be completely dry? He also had on white, by the way. Me saying I don't care about the cheating. It's not that I wouldn't care. I guess I worded that bad. I would care. I'm not a robot. I just have other crap to worry about in this moment. I can't even begin to worry about the pain in my feel. Yes, cheating is disrespectful. In regular circumstances. In my circumstances, it's extra disrespectful to me because we are so dang sick. Like, day. You care so little about me that you'd cheat now? Mentions of me being a single mom. Isn't typical, but we have communicated about it over the last few weeks. The division of labor isn't fair. So he has been making sure he's home to help with homework, bedtime, playtime, more. So I've been trying to be understanding of his work, I guess. He got back hours at his regular job as well, so I didn't exactly suspect anything. Okay to the update. Thank you to the Redderer that told me exactly what to look for, and thanks for the well wishes. I definitely am starting to feel better a bit, but not by much. Sorry if this is everywhere. He did cheat, and I'm glad I'm not crazy. It was some girl named Valerie. He had her name under his mom's. Didn't ask many questions about who she is because I don't care about her. She knows he's married and he knows he's married. I asked straight up to see his phone, and apparently she's someone that comes into his regular job. He has invited her to come to events I didn't go to, couldn't go to. She danced on him and she made him hard, apparently, and it went from there. Their texts are so cringy. I mean, think, high schoolers. From the things I have been to, she was also there. She told him I was really pretty and asked if I'd be open to a threesome. He told her he convinced me. It came up a few times. They literally talk about me and my kid flight. She's an old friend. All I can do is laugh, y'all. Seriously. He wrote her and told her I suspect something and she told him to delete their pics. Didn't find nose. New Year's Eve was their first night physically having sex, but there was an obvious build-up to it. They had sex in his car. Well, his mom's car because his car's in the shop and he doesn't like to drive mine. Thank God. When I checked the time, he was on the phone with her when he pulled up. He's an idiot, and I'm embarrassed. I know who she is. I've never met her, but I found her. She isn't my focus, though. I feel bad that her self-esteem is so low that she'd be willing to be a secret. It's not like he's rich. I didn't find anything else about anyone else, but who knows? For him, I can't even look at him. He won't leave because apparently we can work it out. I roll, I'm so disgusted. He didn't even shower after. He just laid in the bed I paid for and passed out. He washed his face, got undressed, and went to sleep. I feel nauseous at the thought of him coming to kiss me and my kids after they did God knows what. He knows cheating is a big F no for me. I've always said if he gets the urge to cheat, just leave because I will find out, and I'm not nice and forgiving for crap like this. I even opened the door for him to tell me the truth. Of course, he didn't mean for it to go that far. It was just conversations, and then he got drunk. That this is the first time he has ever cheated, but I can't believe that it, so I won't. But I'm not going to cry about it. I didn't yell. I didn't cry. I just said, okay, and asked him to leave. I've been with him and only him since I was 16 years old. He pursued me. When things got rocky and I wanted to leave, he did the work to keep me. He wanted me. I've gotten him all my 20s. I can't tell if I'm hurt, though, honestly. I'm more or less irritated and disgusted. I genuinely don't even have time to think about it too much. He said it was a mistake. <laughs> I can't do anything but laugh. I should make a mistake similar, I guess. And not to be cocky, but I'm not an ugly woman. I have a very nice body. My personality is amazing. I'm funny as hell. I'm an amazing mom, and I know that I'm a great wife. I'm not lacking suitors at all. This isn't on me, and I won't delude myself into thinking I could have done anything different. I want him to leave. He cheated. It's done and it happened. To the Redditor that said I'm ruining my marriage, I didn't ruin my marriage. He did. Especially because he's a horrible liar. I grew up with him. I know when crap isn't right. Edit. Thank you all so much for all the love and well wishes. I love everyone for all the advice and praise. I appreciate you all so much. He has agreed to leave to his mom's house, thankfully. But get this, after I feel better, he's going to stay to help with me and the kids. The community has some reactions. Spoofy Spoof says, Actively pursues another woman that has texts of them colluding with each other about keeping this a secret. But it was just a mistake. Threw away his entire marriage for someone he barely knows and is now upset? Who would have thought? It's also BS that he claims that 
this is his only time cheating when what he's been doing with her for the past however long has all been acts of cheating in itself. This is just the alleged first time they had sex. They were emotionally and physically cheating before that. Good on you for not falling for his bullcrap. Absolutely no respect for you, your marriage, or the life you spent the past decades building. If you have a good relationship with your mother-in-law, the petty side of me would tell her what he did in her car. Maybe then he'd hightail it out of your home. Stay strong. Edit. Also, what a effing idiot. How did he not expect you to notice he was out for the entire night? No thoughts. Head empty. All because he'd wanted to be a cheat. Edit 2. And how did none of his co-workers not realize that he was essentially dirty dancing with a woman at a work event that wasn't his wife? The OP replied, Thank you. My point exactly. It was cheating before it became physical. He just got sloppy on New Year's Eve because he thought he, I'd be a sleeper too out of it, not thinking that I also have sick kids who are getting up as well. It was such a long, conscious decision. Yikes. He was literally cheating on you right in front of everyone. What the heck? And to use his mom's car? You. This all sounds very high school. Like you said, very cringy indeed. A mistake to go out of his way to invite her to events that he knew you wouldn't be able to attend? Wow. What a gem. His intentions were not pure. He was cheating the whole time. And that's it exactly. If you feel the urge to cheat, why stay? Just leave. Why can't adults just face the facts? If you're feeling the need to mess around and be with someone else, get out of the relationship you're in because, one, you don't actually want to be in that relationship. Two, stop wasting your time and other people's time. Thoughts? Thank you for joining us today on Our Space. Like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. We'd hate for you to miss out. If you want to listen to more stories from me, check out our lounge where I feature a larger variety of non-cheating related stories. See you there.